Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Wayne, and I'm an alcoholic. Today's daily reflection for 2 December, 2 December, 2020. Serenity. Let's go. All right, folks. Before we begin, don't make fun of my studio. It's all I got. I'm an alcoholic. But even better, I'm an alcoholic in recovery, and I have serenity. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, 12 traditions and 12 steps, page 106. As I continued to go to meetings and work the program, something began to happen to me. I felt confused because I wasn't sure what it was that I was feeling. It was a good feeling, but where had it come from? Then I realized it had come as a result of these steps. The program may not always be easy to practice, but I had to acknowledge that my serenity had come to me after working the steps. As I work the steps in everything I do, practicing these principles in all my affairs, now I find that I am awake to God, to others, and to myself. The spiritual awakening I have enjoyed as a result of working the steps is the awareness that I am no longer alone. That's a grip and a half to think about. I'm sorry, I got some dirt in my eye. I am not alone. Wow, that is 100% absolutely factual in my recovery. If you know what I'm talking about and you've ever been truly, truly, truly alone, then you understand the depth at which that kind of loneliness can make you feel. It doesn't matter if I was around a large group of people, if I was, you know, in an auditorium full of folks, if I was at a football stadium, or even if I was the one giving a presentation. I felt so alone that there was nobody that would care for me. That's how I felt. And the fact that I am no longer alone is prevalent in my life and prevalent in my recovery and sobriety. And I know that there is a, a a spiritual um, basis that is larger than myself and that I am able to have insight to. Now, you might not be all wrapped around doing the 12 steps. You might not regurgitate the 12 steps and 12 traditions. And my recovery process is not your recovery process completely. However, our goal is to get sober. And finding serenity is something that will stay with you for the rest of your life because you have that ability to find that calm and that inner peace that you never had while you were drinking or using. And it's a very passionate um, subject for me because, you know, I spent so much time wrapped up in my own head that I could not I couldn't even think of anything to say out loud. That's how much I was in my own head. And to be able to not only love, but recognize other people and to recognize God as I see him. It may not be the same as you see her, but to recognize something larger to myself and to know that I don't have to fight this battle alone is profound. It is, it is such a good feeling that I can come out and do these daily reflections and you know my stories and everything else for people like you and you might be experiencing the same thing. And that serenity that I have to be able to do all this is, 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 is still astonishing and it's still baffling and it's still not cunning, baffling and powerful like the alcohol is, but baffling like how the hell did this happen to me in a good way because I was so far not in a good place 
that I didn't think it was possible. And through working, and this is for me and for me alone, um, for you it might be different, but for me, working the 12 steps and working my program and being patient with my sobriety, because I think that's key. A lot of folks try to rush sobriety and they try to, you know, make it happen day one and say, I'm all good. Sobriety takes work, folks, like I talked about yesterday, and it's not always easy to work the program because you have to be rigorously honest. Who wants to be rigorously honest with themselves? Certainly not me, an alcoholic like me, certainly not, because that means you have to recognize all of your own character defects and all of your flaws and your mistakes and your faults and things regardless of what happened in a situation and someone else may have a fault in it as well but you have to be able to do the hard parts and self-examination is one of the most arduous things that i've ever done in my lifetime and i've done a lot folks i i've been in combat i've you know deployed to places where nobody would want to step foot and I've done things in my occupation as a U.S. Army soldier that don't even compare to what it was when I was walking as an alcoholic. And the same amount of effort that I put into that drinking, like I said yesterday, I have to put into my sobriety every single day. And that all leads me to serenity, to a place where I can be at peace. And as a combat soldier, I'm telling you straight up, there's some stuff you see that you don't unsee. But also as an alcoholic, there are some things that you do that you can't undo ever. And the only thing that we can do is work our program and have that rigorous honesty and have that conversation with the people that is, is necessary for that we have to make amends with because you, you can't not complete all the step work and think that you're okay because if you miss a portion of it, you're missing a fraction of the equation that makes you a whole person again. That's just me. I mean, I, I can go on and on and on about that. And I know you don't want to hear about it because hell, I don't even want to hear about it. I will say this, I will say this. You know, as I work the steps in everything I do, practicing these principles in my affairs, now I find that I am awake to God, to others, and to myself. I practice AA principles in small problem solving, folks. And I, I do it simply with, do I have to admit my fault in this? You know, do I have to promptly admit if I'm wrong? Okay, absolutely I do in certain situations. You know, do I have to make an amends with somebody that I just had an argument with at work? Well, perhaps it's necessary in order for me to move past and make that a harmonious place again. Do I have to admit I'm powerless in a situation? At times you do because we can't always wrangle everything. And the more we try to control, really, the more we lose. And if you're an alcoholic like me, or you're an addict, you know exactly what that's like. The more you try to control something, and that's like a father with a 16-year-old daughter, the more you try to control her, the more you're not gonna have any control. And that goes with teenagers in general, so if anyone out there is like, oh my God, he's talking about teenage girls. No, that's not what I meant by that. So, yes, the principles and traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous work for me in my recovery and they work daily as long as I use them. And that goes along with the daily reflections, which is why I even do them. Um, because a lot of you out there don't have a book like this and you don't have direct access to certain things. And it's pretty easy to hit the play button on YouTube, drown out some noise for a while and listen to my wrangly voice and perhaps get a little something from it because that's what we're here for. And also with this, you know, like I said, we, I, I learned to 
be able to be amongst people. And that, that for me is part of my serenity. Because when I was in my isolation during my alcoholism, I didn't know anything of peace and I didn't know anything of calm. And I, I was absolutely satisfied with chaos and satisfied with, you know, things being busted because that's the way I felt that I belonged to something is if I break it, then I know I did it. And that that's not going to make a lot of sense for a lot of you, but it makes a lot of sense for me. And some folks can understand that. And if you can drop your comment below because someone's going to get something from this, like I always say. And if you're getting value out of this video thus far, hit that like button so we can keep this in circulation. I know I'm rambling on once again, folks, but that's just what I do here on One Sober to Another because, I don't know, I'm me, one sober person talking to you, and who else is going to listen, right? I don't know. So the 12th month is an interesting month because if you follow along in the daily reflections, they all coincide with the, the month, and the month coincides with the step in Alcoholics Anonymous. So if you are not an AA -er and you watch this channel, guess what, folks? You've been listening to the steps. And if it's, if it's even helpful for you, I mean, you know, smash that like button. So I want to give a shout out to this young woman who is going to detox today. Um, she is going to start her journey and she's very nervous. And I would put her name up here, but I don't want her to have any more anxiety than she already has about going to detox. Um, so she should be headed there today. And just throw her some love through your feelings and through your intuitions and your prayers. And hopefully it gets to her and gives her strength through her journey. And hopefully it's the start of her journey and not the beginning of her next relapse. Um, but anyway, so I'm one sober to another. You guys are freaking awesome. Um, yeah. Last to go down a little. I'm an idiot. Flash the garden, folks. Dig it. I'll see you in the next one.